something that controls all the others. Is this the top of the Chimeran hierarchy? Maybe. Maybe. Well, let's go poke around, see if we can find the bastard. Oh, looks like we have hostiles. Oh, hello. Easy, guys. Didn't have to be like that. So now we've got all this juice up and running. Let's go back. Got some fuel air grenades. Nice. Now you've got a few varieties of grenades. You actually... You seem to be able to have uh, quite a few of them, which is nice. You can start relying on the grenades a little bit. Oh, and that's what I mean. you got to crane the controllers. Or the controller, I should say. Oh, with the crouch. And the R2. Ooh. That was not good. Ooh, come on, Arga Chops. Ooh, we need a breather. Definitely need a breather. Okay. 40 millimeter grenades. Interesting. You're done. Come on, recycle that. I don't know if there's any indication of when you're ready to fire again. Ooh, look at that blood fade in and out. Right, now, do we have any goodies in here? No? Seriously? No goodies? Yeah, I always thought personally, like, the big showcase for me, for the PlayStation 3, was the Uncharted games. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, the Uncharted games. Now, Again, I, I kind of... I like the Uncharted games. Um, quite a lot, actually. But uh, I don't quite think they're the second coming of Jesus or anything. But they are really good. Too much climbing for my uh, tastes. <laughs> I did get really bored with all the climbing around. However... Oh, hello. It really did show off nicely what the PS3 could do. Especially like Uncharted 3. Man, that was a looker. But I remember... Yeah, getting Uncharted 1 was the big moment for me with my PlayStation 3. I started playing... Because I played the demo of it, I remember. Um, and I was like, wow, this is mental. Like, even the stupid little things, like running through pools of water and Nathan would get wet and he'd slowly dry out. Uh, we hadn't really seen much of anything like that before. So that was cool. And the gameplay as well was probably has aged a little bit now, obviously. It was really fun. I enjoyed the puzzles. I enjoyed everything about that game. Apart from the climbing. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it was... It was... Um, the new Tomb Raider. Then, obviously, Tomb Raider came back uh, with the reboot and all was right with the world again. Because I really enjoyed that one. I never played the other two. Need to change that. Evening. Oh! Here we go. Yeah. I mean, Uncharted was essentially just Tomb Raider. Uh, and I don't really mean that in a bad way either. Because there was definitely space for games like that. You know, because Tomb Raider wasn't being Tomb Raider anymore. I stopped following Tomb Raider. Ooh, hello. Hello. I think I stopped following Tomb Raider after the PlayStation 1. And I don't know why, really, if I'm being honest. I think I just, I was done with those games, done with Lara and all the rest of it. Just wanted something new. Oof, that was rough. Or maybe it was because I couldn't buy the games because I was a kid. 
and uh, there's only so many games to go around. And the Tomb Raider games weren't exactly top priority for me. It could have been something to do with that, actually. Now, I remember my friend bought Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness on the PlayStation 2. Now, that was a really unpopular game. Uh, basically killed the franchise, in a way. Um, at the time, playing it, I thought it was fine. You know, but I didn't really see a lot of it. I just saw bits of it here and there. Oh, of course. But I did recently, well, not recently. I did go back to it and play it. Oh, God, I was still with my ex. Oh, it must, nah, it must have been ages ago. Um, on the PlayStation 2. And, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it wasn't great. For the time, on the, on the PlayStation 2, it looked nice, but unfortunately, it just, it just didn't, it just played like all the other games. It felt like a PlayStation 2, a uh, PlayStation 1 game, um, you know, which was not what you bought the PS2 for. Apparently, the story was a bit shit as well, but I can't comment on that because I'm not, not really sure. Okay, we're good. Oh, we're on the other side. Okay. Um, oh. Flick the switch, I guess. Oh, I see you, you bastard. You're not as smart as you think you are. Nice. Okay. Oh god, we're really out of ammo for this thing again already. Uh, don't have a lot for the auger either. Because you fight the auger guys quite often. Um, but they don't drop a lot of ammo. They only drop six shots. So, you need to kill what? Um, like four of them or so? To get one magazine? Come on, you little git. Damn, you and that meat suit. That meat suit should be heavily damaged by now. There we go. Git. Oh, jeez. There's always more, huh? I mean, I suppose the board of wars was uh, thinking about it. Uh, after my PS1, and I had the Dreamcast, which obviously, well, <laughs> yeah, the Dreamcast, as great as it was, didn't last very long. Oh, I played some fucking great games, though. And then I, I kind of went over to PC gaming. So, that's probably why. I got out of Tomb Raider as well. Because then I was more into, like, Half-Life and... Unreal Tournament. Now this dude here, I, I think this guy is a Cloven. No, he's an American soldier, I think, actually. I don't do Morse code, so I don't know what he's saying. I'm not really sure what's going on with this guy. But his helmet is awesome. It's not very practical. But it's awesome. And that, there's something about that Morse code as well that's just really creepy. Oh, hello, doorbell. Okay, and we're back. Doorbell, eh? So that was A Bug's Life arriving on the PlayStation 1. I actually forgot I bought that ages ago. Oh, hey guys. Of course you're going to show up. The boxes of shotgun shells kind of gave it away. Yeah, so Mrs. was saying um, that when she was young... I mean, she's like 27, so she's still basically young. But 
she really used to like the Bugs Life on the PS1. So I thought, I don't have that. I'll grab that and see if she wants to play it. Right. Oh, hello. Definitely the shotgun is the cure for these guys. Look at these tunnels they're digging. Oh. Oh, hello. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Lovely. This ain't going to go badly at all, is it? Good thing we got the shotgun, that's all I can say. Oof. That spread shot on the shotgun is amazing. Man, that would have been a lot rougher without it. I actually completely forgot that I ordered that as well. Ordered that like ages ago, man. Oh, and the doorbell's going yet again. One second. And we're back. Okay, so that was the landlord. Let's make short work of these guys. Whew. And we're out of shells. Great. Let's go back and grab some more because there's a huge bucket load of those back there. Yeah, so uh, landlord is going crazy at the moment. Not with us, but with the electric company. Um, EDF, no less. Because uh, they're sending another one of his tenants the wrong bill. <laughs> Repeatedly. So... Uh, unfortunately, with these bloody electric companies, you can't reason with them. You can't talk sense to them. They're just evil entities um, that are savaging the entire world right now. Kind of like the Chimera, actually. Yeah. Now, was that worth it to go back for a handful of shotgun shells? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, ah. I was going to say. Right, let's grab some goodies. Ooh. Anybody? Oh, I was going to say, anybody home? I guess not. That's a perfect opportunity to drink coffee. about the Chimera in the past two decades was in there. We had maps of the Chimera invasion spreading through Russia, autopsy records of Chimera and creatures, charts of the death tolls across Europe. These were numbers we didn't even disclose to our own soldiers. Damn. There were files that showed the progression of the Chimera virus in humans. In over 6,000 cases, there were no records of any form of human resistance. There were also detailed schematics of our specimen tank and what was in it. We call them angels. They're the most powerful of all the Chimera. We believe the angels control other forms of Chimera via some form of telepathy. For all I knew, this one was already controlling Hale. Yeah, that pretty much makes for some grim reading. Angel. Some very grim reading. Well, let's go. Unfortunately, there's no data or anything that we can just gather up and send over to the Americans or anything. I think that's probably one of the biggest losses uh, if you think about back in these ye olde times. All this research data and stuff, you can't just pack it all up and send it over to your allies. Um, you know, there's no floppy disks, there's nothing. So getting information out and about would be the worst. Which means when 
uh, the fight eventually gets to your allies and they've kind of buried their heads in the sands, they've got to start a square one with the research. See, if the Russians had um, informed everybody of what was going on in the beginning, maybe things could have been different. But who knows with the Chimera? Kind of the unkillable enemy, really. Unstoppable, anyway. Oh, great. You just locked me in here? Okay. I see how it is. With all these menials. <laughs> that guy just rocket sleds across the floor. I mean, one thing that's cool is when they're, like, burnt up, they actually turn black and burnt up as well, which is cool. But anyway, there should be another research paper here, which will... Um, it's not one of those, is it? I think it's the post-mortem. Viruses create radical physical alterations human growth triggers are adjusted for each chimera phenotype metabolic rate is accelerated 12 times to accommodate this yields rapid cellular regeneration and wound healing response with virtually no scarring core temperature is nearly doubled manifestations of hybridization can be studied but with instruments available i am unable to isolate the virus yeah, I mean, there's only so much they could do. I mean, it, it, around the 40s and 50s, I think, was where they st only really started to put theories together about um, viruses and bacterium and that kind of stuff, if I remember correctly, anyway. These, ooh. All these batteries. So all their labs and whatnot are very basic. Hello, guys. Evening. Ooh, we've got a nice amount of air fuel grenades here. Let's get rid of some more of this glass. Let's get one in there. Or maybe two. Ooh. Oh, my God. They're amazing. I love these things. Not being super effective here, though. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we freaking go. Oh, I love these grenades. Absolutely love them. Oh, hello. Do you want to yourself? Oh, they're so good. Like portable nuclear weapons, man. Right, we've got some more air fuel grenades. Lovely. Yeah, that was a very bad example of how not to... Or very good example, I should say, of how not to use those grenades. Because when used properly, they're unbelievable. Because flamethrowers and the like are definitely what you want to use against these guys. That is not the sort of grenade that I want to use. Oh, God. Very basic, kind of like chemical explosive grenades. Ooh, hello. Hiding in the corner there. Now, I'm not sure if uh, the Chimeran can actually communicate. Because every now and again, they kind of like choke out words. But I don't know. I know they have been seen like wearing personal artifacts, which is something that we get into a little bit later on. Of their former lives. Or whether they have any meaningful memories or anything. It's just something that we don't know. Oh, hey! You're not supposed to get out of the hellfire, dude. You're supposed to stay in it. Yes, here we go. You can see these are just kind of super effective against everything. The ultimate weapon. I got some more grenades. 
Now, do we have any health? I think we should. There we go. Yank. Okay. We came, we saw, we sterilized. We get some more 40 mils, which I don't know. Well, I say we're getting some more. We've got one more. Oh, hello. Something is trying to communicate with us. Or something bad, I should say, is going on inside our heads. Then we are kind of... Uh... <laughs> Under the influence of some strange alien virus. So... I mean, we still don't even know what the Chimera are, to be fair. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. That's not exactly how I wanted this to go down. Uh, nope. Oh, God. Bloody human grenades. What did that even bounce off? Honestly. And that underslung grenade launcher just blew us up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, sure. Three more frags. Yeah, just, oh, the physics is just not great. But, uh, you know, I guess you can't have everything in, you know, that is, is a brand new franchise on a brand new system. It was always going to be rough, I guess. And I remember, actually, in the documentary, um, they didn't have a long time to create this game either. Oh, that hedgehog worked really bloody well. Oh, I heard that. Somebody got something to say? Anyone? Oh, hey guys. Yeah, that seemed to shut some mouths. Oh, God. Cover is not very effective in this game at all, as you can see. 303. Oh. Right, let's get that out there. That did not go where we wanted it. Yeah, so getting grenades and things through holes in cover is really bloody difficult. Nope, that didn't work either. Yeah, threading the needle with grenades and stuff is just... Oof. Oof. Okay. So here, there is another document. And this is uh, the autopsy. Uh, mutations remain uh, identifiable as human. Organs, as uh, mutations remain uh, identifiable as human organs, though redundancies develop. A second heart is common in hybrids to maintain rapid pulse. Specimens used heat exchanging device integrated into its circulatory system to lower blood temperature and prevent necrosis. Device is common and effective in many chimera, but the uh, decrepitude of so called grey jacks indicates a performance envelope. Hmm. So they use these heat exchangers in their bodies to cool down their rapid um, temperatures that is created through their metabolism. However, apparently... 
its efficiency is limited. Okay, interesting. I'm sure we will continue to... Ooh. See this performance degradation? Greyjax, you say? Now, there's a Greyjack. <laughs> Literally as soon as we hear of him, he is discovered. Oof. Now, that's actually quite difficult to save that guy, but you can do it, as you've seen. These are Greyjacks. These things are pretty nutty. And it does kind of help to have a friend on your side here. We've got no grenades either. So now we're going to get two at once. Which is suboptimal. Now these things will just run at you. They don't have weapons, but they have rather nasty claws. <sighs> now who is releasing all of these guys? I mean, come on. Not going well at all. Let's try and keep our dude alive here. As much as we can. Ugh. So these grey jacks, huh? Rather interesting, spindly little creatures. They're not even that little, are they? Oof. So you can see their heat exchangers are not glowing red like the other ones. And they're more kind of absorbed into their body. Their body seems to be continuing to grow and grow around these heat exchangers. Yeah, very interesting. Um, documents. A mirror. Greyjack. Greyjacks are decrepit hybrids which have nearly outgrown their bodies. As they approach death, their cooling units are overtaxed and their rampant metabolism steadily cooks them from the inside out. The resulting necrosis gives Greyjacks an odour of decaying flesh. Although unarmed and seemingly frail, the long reach of their uh, wicked claws can be deadly. The wounds they cause are very difficult to clean and often fatal. So, interesting, these Chimera have a shelf life. Very interesting to know. Probably a very important thing to know as well. Not sure why we were keeping quite so many in storage. Probably didn't need eight of them. Just saying. Alright, dude. Let's keep going. At least I managed to keep my friend alive. Oh, looks like we've got some serious combat going on in here. We're keeping them back from the tank. Don't worry. Oh, jeez. You know shit's going to go down when you have a whole group of soldiers attempting to help you. Oh man, just fire, fire everything. Oof. Uh. You know what? Let's let the alien weapons do the talking. They seem to be a lot more accurate with their weapons than you are. Which kind of makes sense. Kind of. Ugh, okay. How's it going, boys? Oh, you're all dead. Of course you are. What did I expect? Alright, let's push these guys back. Ugh! Oh, hello. Right, let's go try and grab some goodies. Because that ain't the last of it. Um, fortunately, all my friends are dead. So, that's bad. Cryogenics. 
Yeah, I'd love to see this game um, fleshed out more. More information. God, I want more information. A sponge for information. Hmm. Oof. We don't have much gear left, do we? Oh, it's going to have to do for now. Come on. Let's be having you. Again, you can imagine there's probably not a huge amount that could be done against these guys. When they can just literally break down your city walls and just invade you with those things. Yeah. I mean, kind of unfair. Very similar to the old Locust Horde. At least tactics, anyway. Although, the Locust Horde was something different. Ah. I mean, that is one hell of a transport ship. And there we have it. We've managed to reach the Angel. But, that's going to have to wait for the next video. I'm going to definitely have to chop this one down. That was uh, over an hour of recording. Holy shit. So, I would like to say we managed to salvage Northern Command, but <laughs> not really. Northern Command is absolutely screwed. Uh, another huge defeat. However, we haven't lost the... Um, we haven't lost the Angel. Yet. <laughs> um, and again, the only one to survive is Nathan. Everybody else is dead. Are you seeing the theme here? Everybody dies repeatedly. You get the theme, yeah. Only one that survives is Nathan. So, you know, the the catastrophic casualty rate uh, of the British Army is just it's not sustainable. Like, this is an absolute ass-kicking. Um, <laughs> defeat after defeat after defeat. Uh, and it's not like we lose some men and the rest fall back. We lose everybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really like our chances. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.